Hello, regulars to the channel, all 20 or so of you, will have noticed that I have a habit of making cars with no front ends. Put simply, I'm bad at normal cars. I'm entirely willing to make a 300-piece custom engine on a whim, and in my first video with voice commentary I made custom dually tires, but making a normal coherent design seems to always be beyond me. So, when the Dolly 2 AI, which I can't figure out a way to distinctly pronounce, lost its waitlist, I was very excited to try and use it to design my cars for me. For those of you who don't know, Dolly, maybe I should pronounce it Doll E, is an AI that generates images based on text you give it. It's been available for a while if you can get through a massive waitlist, but before I could do that myself, they removed the waitlist entirely, so here we are. What happens if I tell it to generate a car? Huh. Yeah, so as it turns out, it's not as easy as that. Aside from weird visual problems like this, as it turns out, the AI is actually kind of difficult to work with in general. As the website helpfully points out, longer descriptions work best. Except they don't, not really, because just adding more words does not necessarily mean more detail. You kind of have to just know what words help, and with only 50 free tries to start with, you'd better learn fast. To make matters worse, it doesn't seem to always know exactly what you mean. Take a look at what it does when I ask it for a hatchback car, for instance. What's this? For that matter, the originality of its designs is questionable, to say the least. Even specifically asking it for an original car just confuses it, though to be fair, this is not what the AI is made for. Eventually, after generating a lot of stuff with Dolly, I decide to move on to a different AI entirely, this one called Stable Diffusion. This one is a lot more confusing to get working, and I won't get into that, but it has a website called Dream Studio that I'm using to make things simple for myself. That has a limited number of free uses too, but there are many other ways which are actually completely legitimate to use the AI once you run out. Though the first car I generate is maybe not that promising, I find that Stable Diffusion works much, much better for this. Most importantly, its designs are a lot less like clones of real cars, and it also includes a bit more of the car and frame in general. In fact, it only takes me three searches to get something I like enough to make an automation, so... Okay, here we are. Almost three minutes into an automation video, I'm actually playing automation. I could include all the mechanical stuff in this video, like building the engine, but now more than any other video, who cares? After all, the AI designed the styling, not what's underneath. So after skipping ahead a good 20 minutes or so, it's time to begin working on the styling. Body morphing is always important for an auto build, but it's absolutely vital for this one since I'm trying to replicate the AI's design. It's a good thing that I'm using a mod body. I consider this one to be one of the best made in the game. As it turns out, it's pretty difficult to choose fixtures to match an image, since Auto has a fairly limited selection of usable ones. Also, before I forget, it's probably a good idea to stick a reference image in the corner so you can see what I'm working towards. There, that's much better. I try a bunch of things for whatever you'd call the side styling, and most of them are terrible. The problem is this, and it's a central theme of Auto as a game. Auto has tons and tons of bodies and fixtures, yet somehow, no matter what you're trying to do, it never has the right thing for the job. This is an even bigger problem for car bodies, and we'll get to that later. I'm not sure why this is, it might be that my expectations are too high. After all, there are many ways to style a car, and it's hardly practical to put every styling idea ever created into a game. But it's a problem regardless, and it's one I encounter on every car I make. The difference is, with any other car, I can just come up with a different styling idea that will work better with the fixtures the game has. With this, I can't, because I'm trying to make a replica of that AI-generated car. Even without an interior, I think that fixture problem is why I ended up spending like 5 hours making this car. The solution to this problem is to make all the styling features by cutting shapes out and filling them in, which is a horrible and painful process I am all too familiar with. 
But hey, anything for content, right? After annoyingly having to cut out and rebuild part of the fender because of one of the body molding pieces I used, I do a few minor details and move on to the car's front end. I start the front end with some body molding pieces. They're the key to making any modern design, but more importantly, they're the only part of the front end that doesn't terrify me. I have no idea how I'm going to make any of the rest of it, but the body molding? Not much issue. I give the car a placeholder grill, but it eventually ends up being the final grill anyway, because I am lazy. While adding the lower grill, I notice something very obvious. The front end is too low, so I cut part of it off. There's only so much you can do with normal body molding fixtures, and if you look at the reference picture, you'll see that's not enough. That's why I'm using these fog lights as molding. They'll look better later. Speaking of which, it's time to do by far the hardest part, the vents. I have a vague idea of how to do them, place a bunch of separate vents, then cut out the intersecting bits, but it's still a pain. It also requires you to fill in both the edges of the vent and the vent mesh itself, which takes forever. Obviously, with the power of editing, it is hopefully not as miserable for you as it is for me. Do I complain too much in auto videos? In any case, once I finish the mesh, I'm still not done with the front. There are headlights to do. I use grills as headlight housings because the shape is right, but the actual inside of the headlights is... tricky. As you can see, the car the AI made has none, so eventually I just put some random LED shapes in there. It doesn't look very good, I know, but I eventually got tired of trying to do it properly. With the front done, or at least as close to done as it'll get, the car needs rear styling, so I have Stable Diffusion give me another image. Then it's back to work. The rear is harder to work on in some ways, mostly because the shape of the body is different from the car in the image, but it's overall probably easier. There's nothing left that's as annoying to do as the front vents, and because the design is of a different car than the first, I can kind of just interpret it loosely to make it match better. It also probably helped that I was binging YouTube in the background. My Wi-Fi was out while I was working on the front, and that made it a much more frustrating process. I may have an addiction. Like the front, the rear relies heavily on body molding fixtures, and I'm quite proud of how I made the shape for the... It's not really a diffuser, but, you know, the thing that goes where a diffuser would go. The one really big change I make from the AI image is that I make this bit white to match the front. I didn't actually include the bit I'm matching in the edit, but there's a little white lip under the lower grill. You'll see it in a bit. The taillights then are very simple, because as always, I get lazier as the video goes on. This is also true of my editing, but I am of course trying my best not to show that. Like how I didn't show me replacing some of the rear molding, but whatever, you didn't notice. Eventually though, the car is done, so as is custom, let's take some photos and get it in beam. I also took the same photos, but with a different time preset. I'm not sure why, but here you go anyway. The car seems to have exported pretty well, other than the ugly chassis being visible through the windows, but it does not drive as well as it looks. Yes, it has been two years to the day, yes, really, and no, I didn't plan that, since my most popular video and you still can't trust Auto's suspension tuning presets. Side note, this video will get maybe a few hundred views at most, and that most popular video has 179,000. YouTube is hard. This SUV has the softest suspension I've ever driven in beam, other than maybe a rock crawler, and that combined with its weight makes it very difficult to wrestle around corners. I could go back and make the suspension stiffer, but I won't. As previously established, this video is only really about the styling. And also as previously established, laziness guides everything I do. So, 
do text damage AIs work for designing auto cars? Well, although I'm not entirely happy with how this particular car turned out, it's clearly possible to translate a design to automation, maybe even quite easily, and I don't think this car looks too obviously like any real car, although I'm sure I'm wrong about that. There's something I haven't told you, though. You see, I played around with the AI for three hours and generated something like 200 images, if not way more. And how many usable designs did I get out of it? Six. Most of the cars the AIs generated, though this is a much bigger issue with Dolly than with Stable Diffusion, were either not what I asked for or exact clones of real cars. But that's not even the biggest problem. You know how this whole video focused on that one SUV I made? I actually tried to make all six cars in auto. This car failed because the only body that could get even vaguely close is the LaFerrari body, which, in my opinion, is one of the hardest to work with in the entire game, and it still wouldn't have the right proportions. This car failed because the game pretty much has nothing at all like it. This was the closest I could get in shape. This car, which was my favorite of all the AI designs, failed too after quite a bit of effort on my part to stop it from doing that. It would be possible, except for the sides and their distance from the cabin, which automation just doesn't have an equivalent for. As you can see, my attempt just didn't live up to what the AI created. With these two, I didn't even try. I looked at the bodies automation had and decided there was nothing that would work. These are some of the most generic-looking cars I've ever seen, and so it amazes me that Auto doesn't have anything even close to them. The only car that worked was that SUV, and even then I had trouble getting a rear for it. Here are a few of the ones that didn't make the cut. Clearly, though, it is possible still to use AI to design a car for automation, and it can work decently well. You just need a bit of luck, a fair bit of effort, and a loose interpretation of some of the car's styling features. For now, though, I'm done rambling about AI. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.